Okay, so I think we, we should start. It's about time. So this is the engineer session, right? We have, uh, well, we have uh, seven people in each of our uh, physics 101 this year, each of the engineering. And uh, they all built their uh, products and they work up uh, bloody hard. This is a good test. So, uh, uh, but one of them, uh, uh, Aaron Gillens, uh, he, uh, his soccer team just won, unexpected won uh, last, last, last weekend or something. So they had to be away. So, uh, you know, for another game uh, in Kentucky. So uh, he sent me this uh, PowerPoint presentation he pre-recorded. So I'm going to uh, present that on his behalf first. And then we'll go alphabetical order, okay? So this is uh, software engineering. He made this uh, uh, similar thing, okay? Hello, my name is Aaron Williams, and I will be presenting my project today, which is called Building a Soccer Simulator. The goal of this project was to write a computer program to predict the most likely scores of a soccer game in the Premier League in Europe. The math model used is called a Poisson distribution, which can be seen in the top right. X represents the number of goals that we are trying to find the probability for, and in this particular code we found the probability of each team scoring 0 to 7 goals. And lambda is the expected goals calculated, which is found by comparing the goal scored by each team divided by their number of games and compared to league averages. This slide shows a small excerpt of the code that I wrote. In the top left you see an excerpt of where you can enter a home and away team names for the rest of the code to populate with their respective data. Also in the top left it shows how the expected goals for each team is calculated, which is used as lambda in the last slide and it shows how the Poisson distribution is ran for each team. In the bottom left is our the first result that we find after running the program. In the first and second columns represent the home team and the third and fourth columns represent the away team. So in this case it shows that Manchester City has a 3.8% chance of scoring zero goals a 12.5% chance of scoring one goal, and so on and so forth. And it also shows that Southampton has a 77.9% chance of scoring zero goals, and so on and so forth. The image on the right is another way that the data is represented. It takes every combination of outcomes ranging from 0, 0 to 7 to 7, and calculates the probability of those outcomes. So in this case, it shows that the likelihood of a 0-0 draw is 2.98%, and the likelihood of Southampton beating Manchester City 1-0 is 0.745%. To see how well this representation worked, I compared the data to real life outcomes. So in the top left, I ran Leeds as the home team and Liverpool as the away team. And as you can see, the highest probability was Leeds scoring one at 34.6% and Liverpool scoring one at 36.47%. And the actual score was in fact one to one. In the middle, I ran Wolves as the home team and Sheffield as the away team. And again, you can see that the likelihood of Wolves scoring one was 31% and the likelihood of Sheffield scoring zero was 51% and the game did in fact end up at 1-0. to zero. On the right we have Manchester United as the home team and Burnley as the away team and the highest probabilities was Manchester United scoring two goals at 25.7 percent and Burnley scoring zero at 58.6 percent. The final score was 3-1 to one, which was a little off of our most likely prediction but it was still a Manchester United win and it was the second most likely probability. Looking ahead, um, my favorite team is Chelsea so I decided to look at their remaining six games of the season and I predicted the outcomes for each of those six games. So their next game they play West Ham and the most likely outcome is a 1-1 draw. After that they play Fulham which is most likely going to be a 2-0 win. After that they play Manchester City which had a 1-1 draw or a 1-0 loss as similar probabilities. 
Chelsea versus Arsenal had four outcomes that were equally likely, but all result in a Chelsea law Chelsea win. Then the most likely outcome for Chelsea versus Leicester was 1-1. And finally against Aston Villa, it was a 1-0 or a 2-0 win. The applications for using a Poisson distribution is obviously sports betting. Uh, ideally, we'd like it to predict the actual outcome as well as the most likely outcome, although it does not include several factors, including player transfers or changes to the roster that will affect how the team plays, a change of managers, which might change tactics and how the team plays, weather conditions that make scoring either more or less likely, possible fatigue due to games being closer together, and thus the team not playing as well or scoring as many goals, and injuries to key players that are likely to score goals or to prevent goals being scored upon them. Thank you. Any uh, questions? Uh, go on Zoom, any of our, or uh, anyone here, any questions? How do they ask questions? They just shout out or? They'll put it in the group chat and then I'll say it to you. Oh, oh please. Okay, yeah. If you, 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 you receive anything, you know, just uh, send it. Anything? No? All right, blame on me. That's because I, uh, I interpreted it. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, are you good? Yeah? For this one? Okay. All right. So now let's quit this. Adwell. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're over here? Yes. Okay. So then uh, turn the camera here. All right. Can I turn in the right direction? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're almost there. Yep. Almost there. Almost further. There it is. Okay. So I zoom in here. You see this, but. So here's uh, Ethan, Ethan Atwell, uh, freshman, yeah, yeah. Uh, for this, and uh, engineering. So he's built this, uh, actually, what, what did you build here? Oh, uh, oh yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, sliding door, right? So the, you, the door uh, will power the, uh, the light. Okay, you can tell them how it, uh, more about this. Yeah. All right, uh, am I speaking loud enough? Can everybody hear me? Oh, funny. Okay, good, okay. So the my project basically shows like how we can use like the energy of opening doors to we can harness that and convert it into electricity. And the main principle behind this is uh, Lin's law, which tells us that like as a wire moves through a magnetic field, there is an induced current and an induced EMF. And so uh, in Lin's law, it tells us that the number of turns in a coil, like if, as that increases, that uh, the induced EMF and induced current will also increase. And the other two factors in the equation are also uh, the change in magnetic flux and the change in time. And the change in magnetic flux is divided by the change in time. So with an increased change in magnetic flux, that will increase the induced EMF, and with a decrease in change in time, it will do the same. And so basically what Lin's law is telling us is that you just want like a really strong magnet. You want a coil with as many turns as possible, and you also want that the amount of time that the coil is in the magnetic field and out of the magnetic field to be as small as possible. So in my model, I have a sliding door here with magnets. I have two magnets that are on here, and they are not the magnetic fields of them are not in the the coil right now. But as the door slides open, the magnetic fields will go through the coil, and it will induce an EMF and a current at the same time. And I don't know if they can see the ammeter, but I'll just try to, I mean, I'll just tell you what, I got it slides open, we get like readings of like 17, 6, like as it opens up, it will, it can induce a current through it, and that's just basically my project. Any questions? Yeah? No? No? Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Okay. And uh, so the next one will be uh, Cole Amlonke. Can tell me what we're Okay, so I'm Cole Amlonke. Uh, I'm at a solar panel lighted birdhouse. Uh, pretty much so, like, people that are obsessed with nature or, you know, bird watching or whatever, they can study how birds uh, 
like, you know, sleep or uh, what they do during the day or even at night. Uh, and like watch them like as they grow. Uh, kind of had some flaws. I dropped in my car and the lighting uh, wire, one of the wires broke. So I'm not for sure if it'll work right now. But uh, pretty much like these two solar panels come through. Come through, and it was supposed to go to this battery, and it's supposed to charge the battery. Uh, the battery is a three volt battery, and these both these solar panels are 1.5 volts. Uh, they're put into a circuit, so uh, adding them together will give you uh, three volts, which then charges the battery. Uh, and then <clears throat> when they go through, and they come to a resistor, I have a resistor up uh, in the top up here. And then those resistors go to four LED lights. Uh, Scare me. What the hell is that? Chat or something. I think he's muted. Okay. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Okay. You can continue. Okay. okay. So then it has this on and off switch that's right here at the top. And then you can press on. I don't know if you can see that in the. Yeah, I can see the lights in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it still works. Yeah. All right. And then the lights come on and off. Uh, you can figure out how it works. So you didn't break your fingers. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. See that? So that, that, you know, that was, um, you know, so he, the, you had, he had kept the uh, solar panels charged. Yeah, so it's just, uh, this is a, you know, kind of like prototype, but, uh, you, you know, you got a better uh, solar panels, and then the, the voltage would be higher, so you know you wouldn't even need a backup uh, three volt battery. Okay. Yeah. So next time, put a blue jet in there. Yeah. 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 Oh. Blue jet will never sleep at night. <laughs> All right. Any uh, questions for uh, Hamilanke? No. All right. All right. Switch seat with uh, uh, this guy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. So now let's uh, let's do this one first. This is uh uh, uh Zach Campbell. Yeah. So he's gonna demonstrate the uh, V4 uh, engine. All right. All right. So this is a V4 engine. Um, has four cylinders here, pistons, piston rods, the crankshaft, and then a timing belt as well. And um, I basically make the crankshaft. I just bent a down rod. And then I just insert it into the drill. So now, once I power the drill, it's going to get the engine to start going. Oh, yeah, I don't have a wall on the uh, timing belt. Okay. Pretty much show that's how it works. And then I just use cardboard to create the timing belt. So um, how I can improve on this, I need to first thing I need to do is put a wall to prevent the timing belt from coming off, like uh, to this off. And then additionally, um, I need to put valve to actually show the uh, uh, normal combustion valve would be. So normally as the timing belt rotates, the combustion valve will go up and it'll allow air to come in and then uh, then it'll close and then this piston rod will come up and then it'll create pressure and then that's what creates the uh, thrust in an actual engine. And then additionally, um, I also need another timing belt for over here. And that just kind of, that timing belt will go into the actual engine itself, sort of like an actual real life engine. Plastic syringes, PVC piping, hair um, ties, popsicle sticks, <coughs> and a lot of hot glue. <laughs> yeah, that's my presentation. Okay, any uh, questions? Yeah, very nice. Any questions for uh, Demo? Thank you. All right. 
So now we have uh, Corinna Escobar, and she's going to talk about that training con uh, that she made. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, my name is Corinna Escobar, and I designed a prototype called uh, the cone. Very creative right now. Um, but so basically, it's a three in one, kind of like Swiss Army knife uh, sports equipment. So basically, if you want to train regularly, like with a ball or just with the cone, simply just push this down. Um, and this uh, apparatus in the middle will stay down until you simply have a cone. Now say you want to have like agility um, and you want to pull, fake defender, whatever. Just simply pull it up and these magnets suck because they are too uh, cheap. So anyways, um, it'll eventually get these magnets stuck together um, with, uh, would fold up into a pole. So essentially you would have a pole, fake defender, whatever you need uh, for your training team. Uh, now say, um, you're like, oh, I need more training. So you want what? You want a hurdle or some other type of agility equipment. So all that simply you have to do is take the um, one of the sections of the pole and move it along the groove and bend it to the side. There you go. Um, but essentially, this is all put together through the magnets. You would have uh, a hurdle that would connect to another cone with the similar features, and you would have a simple little hurdle. Um, and yeah, that's basically my project. The cone. So, so let me ask for this. So you said I want two cones, so I can kind of make another one, and then we bend and then attach yeah, so it. Yeah, so if right you have now. another cone with the similar features, you can bend them together, and then they'll connect. With a hook yeah, and magnetized end. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, what is it made of again? Um. So, uh, beginning I did paper just to figure out the pole. Then I went to cardboard, but that cardboard specifically was a little bit too uh, thick. So then, um, I went to Aldi and got like these thinner, um, cardboard boxes. And so I just grabbed a whole bunch from Aldi and just like left. And then. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, so this is sort of confusing because I was like thinking about the construction paper, and that still might have been a little bit too flimsy. So then this actually worked perfect. But then again, the if the magnets work. Yeah. Any uh, questions for Okay. Uh, yeah. I think I think that's good, right? So, okay, so now we have Eric Carr. Uh, Eric Carr uh, made this uh, ultrasonic radar. Yeah. All right, so basically, if you have an object in front of it, it should like map out where it is. And it turns red, yeah. Yeah, it turns red whenever it has an object in front of it. Uh, the project overall wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the wiring was probably one of the hardest parts, just making sure that all the wires were hooked up to the right ports. And then the coding was pretty simple. Well, it was kind of difficult, but uh, we ended up getting it. We spent three hours together the other day trying to download the code back onto the Arduino board. And so, yeah. So yeah, the way it works is that she's uh, she should give herself more credit than this. So uh, she's got the uh, Arduino board, and which is uh, just kind of Uno board, and, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, it, it, it acts like an external device. Uh, you can see the uh, USB port uh, hooked up to the computer, and then uh, uh, so she wired everything in there. So with the sensor you know, attached to the servo, and then there's a little motor in there, and then. Uh, there's a computer chip in the open board you know, to control the, uh, the motion of the sensor. And then uh, uh, the computer does two things, right? So it, it actually, uh, the first part, what you do, you upload it, right? The control codes to the uh, uh, Arduino board, right? So the, the, it, so the, uh, the, the uh, computer would know what to do. <coughs> but, uh, there's also the processing codes. That, that's the part she uh, spent a lot of time on. 
to uh, uh, get a display, as you can see the uh, you know the protractor thing is scanning, right? So uh, and then uh, the um, when ultrasonic it's just, just really just like how uh, those bats you know uh, fly, right? They're flying, so they they just you know, send out ultrasonic uh, signals and, and there's optical and then uh, echoes back, right? So that's exactly how this works. So every time you put you know, if you put your hand in front of it, you can see that. Right, so they would detect that, right? Yeah, you ever turn red, you know. So uh, that's a, it's a really uh, a nice uh, little gadget here. You know? So, uh, any uh, questions? <coughs> Very nice, yeah. All right, so I guess uh, fiber plants? You, you can? Yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, now we have. Uh, Eliza, uh, Fiber, you know, he, he's just going to talk about the uh, psychological flaw. Can I see the whole thing? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have this fever and this is my hydraulic conch. So basically, the function of it is to just like pick items up or set items down. So how it works is like each of these tubes is connected with uh, these, and then when I put pressure on them, it'll like move it. And there's three different controls. So each one, each color controls like a different part. So the pink one controls the claw part. And then this one controls that. And then the green controls I don't know, I'll just pick up this one for a little while. By the way, she was the first one who finished this product. <laughs> the first one in the class to finish the product. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, I guess uh, that's everyone. Yeah. So that uh, concludes the engineering session. You guys, uh, if you want to zoom, any questions or remarks or comments? Is there a last chance? Well, if not, I guess we're done. Yeah, thank you everyone. Just, just congratulations everybody. This is really great. Thank you for letting me be a part of your class. It's really cool. I couldn't do any of this. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Good All job. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh that's a perfect thing. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're done, keep on doing. <laughs>